company featured. Welcome to this Stockbox interview. Welcome to the Research Talks here on Stockbox with Alan Green. And Alan, I'm calling you today from, believe it or not, sunny Scotland. Is that true? Do you believe me? (laughs) Uh, No, I don't, Mark, because (laughs) (laughs) I'm sitting on the south coast. It's grey and overcast. The wind's blowing. It's it's freezing cold. And, uh, you know, it's how I'm... It's how I imagine Scotland to be. (laughs) Most of the time. I think most of the time it is, but I have a lovely anti-cyclonic morning here. It is blue skies and the sun is shining. It's probably a little bit nippy outside. I've not ventured outside yet, but uh, yeah, yeah, it is nice and sunny. So maybe a a walk around the... The Clyde is in order this afternoon while uh, while the weather is uh, is kind. But um, but yes, I'm in the UK. Go on, carry on. A bracing walk. A bracing walk, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, a bracing walk. Yeah, <laughs> but yes, I'm in the UK visiting the the Stockbox team where their office is. So uh, yeah. just here for a few days and then back down to my family and then back home to uh, to the Netherlands. So, uh, but here we are again. It's the end of the week. Are you doing okay? Uh, yes, it's. it's um, we were saying before we came on air about uh, how strange the markets mm. are. You know, the uh, U.S. markets and uh, the uh, TSX markets are are um, you know going ten to the dozen. You know, lots of interest in small caps and miners and uh, explorers, and yet here it seems to be. Uh, we we just have this malaise still, and we're just seeing share prices drifting away, uh, and. I've only one theory for it, and I think it probably is fairly. You know, there, there, there'll be some truth in it, but I, I, I just believe we have this combination of an uncertain Brexit future. Um, we've come out, we've come out of uh, out of Brexit, uh, out of Europe uh, with Brexit, which we all wanted to do. Uh, well, I, I certainly wanted to do, but um, but uh, we then have with that the end of the furlough scheme, um, uncertainties over jobs, although the recent job data has been encouraging, and um, and of course, uh, you know whether whether companies can continue to function as they did uh, pre-COVID. So I think that's mm-hmm. a cocktail that's weighing on investor. Yeah, it, it investor sentiment and money's been taken off the table. I think um, as a result of, or partly as a result of that, and uh, at some stage that it, it has to bounce back. You know, mm. I, I'm convinced of it, and you know, I do, I do believe there are some great opportunities to be had. You know, in the sector that we tend to talk about most of all, which of course is the mining and resource sector. Indeed, it is very strange, isn't it, that, that New York and the other markets are doing very well, and but yet London just doesn't seem to have the the volume at the minute. Um, particularly in the, in the junior cap, I mean, it's been pretty pretty dire for a while. But I mean, you're right; it, it has to at some point turn around. That's you know, you that, that's the that's the, uh, the the what is it that Mark Twain said that Paul Johnson always says? Um, I can't remember. But I have to remember the, the the quote. But um, yeah, yeah. Actually, it, uh, I, I, well, I, I saw Paul at Craig Brown's funeral last Friday. We'll come on to ECR mm-hmm. shortly, and uh, we were talking about that. But uh, of course, the other one, which I also mentioned to Paul, is that the the uh, the markets can remain irrational for longer than you can remain solvent. Yeah, which that, I think is. <laughs> yeah. I think so, that, that's so, what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. And it, so there is that there, there is that factor too. So, um, I, and I think you just you just got to, um, well, as with all investing, you know, never invest more than you can, you can afford to lose. But, but it, because it, it's not like that all the time but no. we're in a we're in this malaise at the moment and i think um i think we're coming to a point where particularly at the start of the new year you know we, we should see a big a, a big increase in volume and it's the time where people come back and look at their investments look at their strategy for the year what they're going to invest in and uh, you'll see a lot more liquidity then and you know that with some good results i think could really start to turn the market around i i think there are some great opportunities to be had Yes, indeed. It does have to turn around at some point. It just has to. Um, and this is what we talk about on Research Talks, isn't it? Finding the uh, the value propositions because to, you know now is the time to be, be acquiring these when it feels like swallowing broken glass. So what broken glass are you going to talk to us about, <laughs> about today? That's, that's <laughs> a very good analogy, actually. Yeah, it does, it does sometimes feel like that. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm going to talk about a company we spoke about just prior to its float uh, earlier this year. That's Caracal Gold, of course. The Epic code is GCAT, currently trading on a market cap of 18.1 million. Um, shares are trading size 0. Uh, sorry, 1.9p on the year, as low as 0. 
1.85, and today as we talk, they're at 1.25. And of course, Caracal was uh, was uh, restructured in uh, the summer um, and listed on the uh, on the, uh, the the London Bay market in uh, on the 23rd of uh, August, um, and it's uh, it's acquiring and developing underexploited gold mining opportunities in eastern Africa, um, and its primary focus, of course, is on the Kilimapisa gold mine, which is in Narok County in Kenya. Um, 230 miles west of Nairobi and about 20 kilometers from the Tanzanian border. There's a current jork uh, a mineral resource estimate of 671,000 ounces of gold. Um, and uh, there are mining and exploration licenses uh, um, on the territory. Now, this is a gold mine that's been producing, or it's a region that's been producing gold since the 1920s. Um, and the, the the mine has uh, has been through various uh, um, uh, ownerships uh, uh, over the over the past years, um, and it's it's slowly evolved uh, into um, a, a, an up to date mine employing lot um, you know a, a large section of the local community. Uh, when Carrick came to market, it raised five and a half million, and uh, straight away that money, um, as it said it, in its uh, in its uh, operational update in November, is to being be used to be continue the refurbishment of the mine. A lot of the equipment is um, out of date, and uh, and um, the actual efficiency of the mine is it w- 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 was fairly fairly well impaired as a result of the old and inefficient machinery. So. Um, in that operational update, um, the 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 company said, and well, Robbie McRae, the CEO uh, in particular, said that uh, the in the September um, uh, mining uh, will, will or in September they uh, met the increase in run of mine production and uh, the improvement in the production there was was uh, came in on budget as well because obviously they're spending money on bringing the mine back in into production and increasing its efficiency. Um, um, and there's a budget there to do that, so they're within budget, which is which is very good news. Um, they tested the gold processing plant and achieved um, over 700 tons uh, per day, um, and also a record month for September, just under 500,000 tons per day, which is which is pretty impressive. Also sold 570 ounces of gold in September. That's a 20% increase on July, um, and the operating costs during that month uh, came in at $985 per ton. So you know we all know what gold's selling at at the moment. So that's that's a that's a pretty healthy healthy uh, uh, profit. Um, so that that's just one part of the of the Caracal investment proposition. Of course, the the other part is that. It's a, a, an extremely fertile area for gold exploration, and um, previous work has revealed um, further assets within the vicinity um, uh, of of the Kilimanjaro piece of mine. Certainly, the southern mineralisation zone. They've uh, they've uh, rev- uh, uh, um, uh, drilling and uh, exploration there has revealed uh, um, grades such as 40 meters at 4.85 grams per ton and seven meters at 7.6 grams per ton. So that's that. that those are, those are pretty good, pretty good numbers. Um, as we've as we've gone forward and uh, the money's been spent, the the efficiency of the mine has improved. Um, uh, the uh, Robbie McRae in his outlook for quarter four said they uh, they were aiming to achieve monthly uh, production sales of a thousand ounces of gold, which is uh, uh, w- w- which w- which is pretty impressive. Um, further operating cost reductions. They're also going to dual list as well as the London listing. They'll be dual listing on the Nairobi Stock Exchange, um, and they have just also announced that they've connected to the national power grid. So of course, uh, you know when you've got to, uh, generators or or um, uh, on-site generators, you know, powering the mine and all the machinery there. As you can imagine, you know, there are probably sort of scary, scary times when you're on the way down the lift and everything stops and all the lights go out. So um, that's that's now not the case. They're connected to the the national grids. Um, they have also just announced the renewal of the prospecting license in the surrounding uh, areas for another three years. That's been approved by the government, um, and. Uh, uh, most recently, they've announced that uh, a, a reverse circulation drilling program has started at Kilimapisa. Um, 
remember I mentioned the Jork uh, estimate of 670,000 ounces. They're aiming to increase that Jork res mineral resource estimate to 2 million um, ounces, uh, you know, which is which is a big jump. But they believe it's in the ground uh, around around the mine and within the within the region. Um, the uh, RC drilling program will be completed by the end of quarter one next year. And, uh, you know, this is I, I think, you know, to get to pick up a, a company that owns a gold mine that's in production that's been refurbished with all the latest equipment for an 18 million valuation is an absolute steal. But um, as we said at the start, uh, Mark, you know, this is where gold miners are now. But, uh, but you know, this this to me, you've got a producing a gold producing company here for for, uh, you know, for micro cap, um, you know, almost uh, almost early stage exploration money. Mm, yeah, indeed. And of course, looking to build out, aren't they, as well on that and really secure and solidify their footprint over in uh, in Kenya in the Greenstone Belt. So, yes, I think a compelling um, case there for sure it's, uh, with the valuation and you say producing as well. It's, uh, it's rare that you, you find that. I think that already de-risks the, uh, the project quite a lot. So, yeah, very, very interested in what the Caracal guys are doing. They're also very active on... on um, on the Twitter, aren't they as well with with uh, keeping people up to date and, uh, and and pictures putting out that kind of thing? So I think their yep. investor communication is very good, which is also important as well for people to to follow that story and, and and see what's actually happening on the ground. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, that 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 is very important, as you say. It's uh, you know it, it, it's a key part of mm. communicating with the markets nowadays and uh, and uh, and communicating with investors. So so yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sticking on the gold theme, then we're going to talk about ECR minerals as well. ECR minerals, um, indeed. Uh, uh, just a quick sort of financial summary. I mean, the comp the company currently trades on a market cap of just twelve point seven million, um, and that's obviously the, the, the uh, share price has come down to currently one point two seven p from a, a year high of just under four. But of course, the the it's been overshadowed uh, by the death uh, last month of the CEO Craig Brown, who we've all known for many years, and I've worked with Craig since 2017. And his tragic death, untimely death, came as an enormous shock, I know, to to the people that work with him, and also to the team, of course, that he was overseeing down in Australia. So um, I recorded an interview uh, yesterday with Adam Jones, uh, the um, head geologist and director, and um, uh, that's out. That was published uh, earlier today on Friday. And of course, uh, he's he just said, you know, they've been shocked, rigid. But, um, you know, what Craig has put in place down there is ironically with the announcement this morning starting to finally come to fruition and um his vision down there i think uh, you know we we knew craig as a fairly uncompromising guy and um you know he was um, he certainly did things his own way but uh, he had that the respect of a great deal of people and you know certainly in cricketing parlance you know for me uh, Craig always played with a very straight bat and um, you know that says a lot a lot about the man but uh, that's it so you know um, moving on to uh, the ECR investment proposition um, as we know there are ECR is invested across a, a, a number of assets in the Victoria gold fields in Australia um, now we have some companies down there that uh, that uh, own licensed territories and um, and own um, and and have uh, are undergoing sort of trenching and exploration on the property. Uh, ECR have actually taken it a stage further, so they have two key properties uh, within the Victoria Gold Fields. Um, they have a third called Tambo. They also have an asset. Um, in northern Queensland, which was acquired early this year, the uh, under Lux exploration, but uh, Mercator Gold, the Australian operating company that runs and operates the Bayliston and Creswick projects in Victoria, is is the key focus. Um, the, the Craig uh, working down there took the decision with the board that what they would do, um, they raised uh, two million pounds early this year. So the company is very well funded, has plenty of cash in the bank. And they took the view that um, rather than battle with local landowners to try and and uh, 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 to try and do a deal so they could go and work on the land, they would actually buy 
packages of land and properties actually within the license areas, and that's exactly what they've done. So they bought that uh, they bought a, a, a nearly 300-acre site um, in the Bayliston area, which is uh, adjacent to HR3 and the Cherry Tree project, and they bought a 45-acre uh, site at uh, Creswick in Springmount Lane, um, which uh, is also smack bang center in where the the, the, the license area where the, the drilling team have, have been working. The third property was purchased just outside Bendigo, and the that's a 59-acre site. They're planning to move the core logging and all of the administrative and uh, logistical functions of the business in the region too there. Bear in mind, of course, they have their own drilling rig, and a second drilling rig is, is soon to arrive um, in Australia. Um, the company... Uh, uh, at Creswick, um, Adam Jones, when I spoke to him um, earlier in the year when they'd undertaken a drilling campaign there, Adam was referring to the mineral shoots that um, that, uh, that they're discovering in the region and also getting an understanding of the complex geology. Um, the Within the Creswick region and down to Ballarat, where you had the Ballarat gold mine, it's, it's known as narrow vein mine. So it's where you can take a section of rock and you'll find you'll find uh, uh, shoots, as he referred to them, within the rock. Um, and uh, But the, the shoots are intermittent, and so you have to understand the geology and uh, find out where the folds are to ascertain uh, where to drill. And that's what the team have been doing. And, and obviously, some of the drilling results have been great, but and some haven't been so good. So we've, uh, but uh, what they've attained through this is a, an understanding of the the geology. Um, there are further assay results to come from Creswick, and uh, Adam said in the interview that uh, there will be more drilling results coming through uh, from the team before Christmas. So we can expect, um, you know, a, a busy time in the next uh, few weeks. But this morning, the team announced that uh, on the HR3 uh, gold field, uh, they had um, achieved. Uh, uh, um, initial success. Um, uh, hole uh, 009, they returned 0.7 meters at 28, uh, uh, just over 28 grams per ton, 52 meters down from the Maori Reef. And they've identified two reefs within HR3, the Scowlers and the Maori Reef. And um, the drilling, uh, there are some diagrams actually on the announcement where you can see the angles at which the drills have gone in and the the level of understanding that they now have for the HR3 gold field. And that was, that was articulated by the chairman, David Tang, who said, uh, you know, they've now got a clear picture of that, of the HR3 gold field structure. And... Adam firmly believes that there is a gold field there at Bayliston. Um, and, uh, so, you know, he's already said that uh, he believes they'll build a mine at Creswick. And uh, certainly Bayliston, um, um, the HR3 territory, would seem to have, um, uh, a, you know, a, a similar similar potential to uh, to to develop a mine there at some point. Um, but, you know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. There's more work to be done. But that's why um, ECR, uh, funded as they were, ha um, uh, were able to make the purchases of the drilling rigs, hire their own drilling team, and work at their own pace on their own land. And that's, the, that's, that's a marked difference between the way ECR work and, 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 the, way, and the way other companies work. So... So going forward, um, we, we can expect uh, that there's, I would say, a vacuum at the moment, obviously, um, not, not a leadership vacuum, because I think Adam, David and Trevor Davenport have picked up the range and they're working as a committee and we'll find out more about that uh, in the coming weeks. Um, but certainly... With, there's a lot more data to come from uh, drilling campaigns at both Bayliston and Creswick before Christmas, so we're going to hear all about that. And uh, you know, I'm certain that we're going to see some more good results. And uh, you know, Adam certainly seems very confident in where the business is is going at the moment. Um, as regards the other assets, of course, they also have a a uh, a 25% stake in the Dangle Gold project in the Philippines, and uh, this is. Uh, this, this is significant because there is a there's a marked change in the attitude of the Philippines government to uh, to uh, mining and and exploration development. Um, 
ECR have also been involved in a food relief program over there in the Dangley region. A lot of people affected by COVID over there. Uh, they've been un- unable to um, access food supplies. So there's a there are initiatives there. So I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the coming weeks too. Um, but certainly, you know, just going back to the valuation where ECR is right now, we've got a 12.7 million valuation um, trading just off the year lows. And, and, you know, this is a company still with uh, some 3 million quid in the bank. You know, it's, it's fully funded. It's got the land. The property is appreciating value. And um, uh, and it's it's fully funded, really, th- really, until I think Greg said, certainly for the foreseeable future. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Alan. Talking to us there, a couple of gold projects, Caracal and ECR, both presenting some, yeah, some quite attractive investment cases, I think. And uh, hopefully, when the uh, liquidity returns to the London markets, then um, some of these bonds that we talk about will see the sort of exaggerated move when uh, when all boats rise. But thank you very much, Alan, and I'll speak to you again next week. Thank you, Mark. Speak next week. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.